morning all. Now after I did my first look at this Turnergy AccuCell 8150, there was some discussion about whether it's real or fake. Now I bought this direct from the Hobby King website. Um, it was shipped to me from the UK warehouse, so it should be the real thing, but I guess there's only one way to find out for sure. So this is it on the Hobby King website. Now it says a couple of interesting things here. It says, um, Turnergy AccuCell chargers are built with quality components and produced in robotic pick and place SMT technology machines. So one thing I could do when I look inside this thing is see whether the components have been mounted using robotic pick and place. And then there's another thing here that says attention. Uh, several chargers are now entering the China market that look similar. These chargers are produced with cheaper FETs and unfortunately much, le much less accurate and very unsafe. So we'll certainly look at the FETs as well. Now I have noticed that there's no serial number on this charger. It does on the front have FCC and CE, but um, okay, well let's take it apart. We've got four Allen head screws on this side, so let's undo those. So let's take these out. And I've got to lift off this fan connector like that. And then this front panel should slide out but it won't because it's fouling on these four buttons. So I've got to lift those out somehow. So the first button I had to get out with a screwdriver from the end, but I'm going to use this chip puller to try and pull the remaining buttons out one by one. If I can get it underneath, yes, like that. So now that slides out. And next, I need to undo the screws to get this display off. And then that comes off on this connector. So that's that. Well, now this all looks quite neat. Certainly these uh, 131 130 ohm resistors have been put on by a pick and place machine. Um, it doesn't look to me like this stuff's been hand soldered. So I think it um, is okay from that point of view. Now the FETs, I can't see because they're behind that metal bar, but something rather alarming is jumping out at me here. This metal bar is all bent and it's not really pressing very evenly against the front of these uh, MOSFETs, I assume most of them are. And if you look here, some unseen fit to wedge additional bits of this heat transmissive rubber behind these two FETs. They're just wedged in there and it's because that metal bar has a bow in it. This is really bad. Now I've got to undo these four bolts here that are holding this metal bar up against the components. But the screw heads are down inside this bit of channel and um, I can't get to them because there's this plate that seems to be sort of wedged in between these two bits of extrusion. So I've come up with a way of getting this uh, this strip out, this plate. I've got a quarter inch Allen key which fits inside that uh, channel and I've got one of these extension things. I'm just going to put some pressure on that and that should enable me to slide this thing out. Yeah, so that's coming out. Good. So now I can undo these bolts which are holding the bar up against the MOSFETs or diodes or whatever they are. Let's take those four out. So the metal bar's out and there are the uh, MOSFETs and there's also a 5 volt regulator in there, uh, 7805. But I can't get a very good view of them so I'm just going to take the board out of the um, metal case. So we appear to have genuine MOSFETs here, IRF Z44N, IRF3205, uh, something I can't quite read there, Z44N again, that same one again, IRF4905, is that a P-channel, uh, 7805 regulator and another IRF Z44N. So they're all genuine international rectifier MOSFETs. So I think I can put to bed the idea that this is a fake. This looks like the genuine article from what Hobby King are saying about fakes. 
But there are no identifying marks on the PCB at all, apart from this set of numbers here. Uh, nothing at all on the back. I mean, the PCB looks perfectly good quality, but there's nothing actually printed on it. And this, with its extra bits of this heat transmissive rubber just sort of stuck in there, is bodgery at its finest. I mean, that's just appalling. And you can see this sort of bow shape here in these four components. They kind of follow an arc, not a flat straight line. So they're not pushing flat back against the extrusion at the back of the unit. And that's because the metal bar across the front was all bent and bowed. I mean, look at this bar. It's absolutely awful. I'm going to have to hammer that flat. I'm going to put it on a piece of wood and whack it a few times. What we have uh, an 80 mega 32A, 16 meg crystal. Uh, these two LM324s and some HEF405 ones, I guess they're CMOS. Uh, big matrix of transistors here and then this enormous uh, resistor matrix up at the end. One thing I've noticed is that um, this balance charging board with all the balance charge ports isn't really supported at all other than on the solder joints at the bottom. So when you're pressing your connectors into that, it's putting quite a bit of force on that. Um, what have we got here? Some LM2904s and an LM353 buzzer, big inductor, a couple of caps, and that's about it. Now straighten this metal bar a bit, and I'm just going to mark a dot, um, a black mark in the center of each of these components so that I can perform a little modification on this. And I've bought some little self-adhesive plasticky rubber stick-on feet a very low profile, they're only two and a half millimeters thick and 10 millimeters square. And I'm going to stick these on the back of this bar centered on those little marks that I made with my felt tip pen. So let's uh, carry on with that. So another one there, and another one there. Now the idea of this is that these will act as springs and they will individually spring load each of these uh, devices and push them back against the rear extrusion, allowing for tiny little discrepancies in the thickness of the component. Now I've actually done a bit of bodgery of my own. There was a gap up at this end, no component there and the bar was coming across these two and bending back as it was attached to this hole. So I found another one of these um, MOSFETs. This is an IRF Z44N I just happened to have. I've snapped the legs off and it's just literally stuck on there with a bit of thermal grease, really just to support this bar. And I've added another one of these feet, sorry about this, on the end. So that should all now be properly supported. So now I'm going to tighten these screws enough to put a little bit of pressure on each of the MOSFETs or regulators or whatever they are, but not enough to bend the bar so much that it lets go of the middle components. And then those rubber feet will just absorb um, the pressure and distribute it evenly um, across all these devices. So all these devices should be now pushed back properly against the um, rubber transmissive uh, thing here, this gasket, without the bodgy extra bits that were shoved in there to allow for the bending of this bar. So hopefully that's sorted out all this business um, with this bar pressing against all these devices onto the heatsink, I can now tighten the four screws that hold the board down because I left those a little bit loose just so that the board could float into the right position. Okay, and let's get the display back on. So I'm pretty sure this is the genuine article. Um, I'm just um, checking it's working after I've taken it all apart. That seems to be all right. 
but um, it's not without its uh, horrors, particularly at the back of the unit here with the MOSFETs and the heatsink. Now I mustn't forget to uh, reattach the fan connector, which I've done there. And there it is, there's the Turnergy AccuCell 8150. I'm going to just stick the buttons back on it here. With its new, hopefully, more thermally efficient uh, MOSFETs attached to the heatsink at the back.